The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com. Hello and welcome back to The Ben Heck Show. In today's episode, we have two special guests, Sean and Connor. So guys, what are you doing here in Madison? Well, we're here to make a clock crane. What is a clock crane? Well, Ben, it's exactly as it sounds. It's a crane that's going to be sitting at the top of a staircase that's disguised as a clock that takes things from the first floor to the second. Okay, so what is the purpose of that? Well, back in about 2006, my mom was diagnosed with MS, so she has a lot of trouble carrying two-handed objects up a staircase. Okay. So we designed this to be able to hook things like laundry baskets and those sort up the crane so it eliminates that entirely. Oh, that should be pretty handy. And then it's going to come out of the crane, so how do you, how do you, how do you control it? Uh, our goal is, of course, is hands-free. Uh, the options are with the Matrix Creator, that device we can do Alexa, but our preference actually is the Matrix Creator will let us do our, our own custom voice activation. Oh, so instead of going to the cloud to be processed, you basically process the voice locally on a Raspberry yep. Pi or something? That is it. Yep. Well, that should be exactly. a lot faster, too. Yes. Yep. And then that's going to talk to motor drivers that are going to open the door, swing out the boom, bring it over this way, and then drop the winch. Yes. And yep. then it will reverse and that to close up. Re correct. You give the, the command and it'll reverse it. And, and All right. It goes. Yep. Sounds yep. good. All right. I see you brought some linear actuators and some other parts. Yep. We have a, a lot of parts. Everything is in design right mm -hmm. now, so we need to assemble some things and then start playing with the code, test things out, make sure we make a safe appliance. Okay. Karen and I can help you with the mechanical stuff and Felix can help you with the Linux side of things. Great. All right. Let's get started. Amazing hacks. Where are my dragons? Inspired designs. Bend them hatches! Regrettable acting. I want to live in a world with Star Wars again! Each week, Element 14's The Ben Heck Show brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. Okay, we're ready to do the electronic portion of this, and we're using the Matrix Creator, which is a, a dev board. I don't know all its history. It was a quick start campaign that came out. But the sucker has every every sensor you can think of. Yeah, this thing is pretty, pretty robust. What we're going to do with it is we're going to make use of its ability to know its position. Okay. And we'll do what we'll make use with the clock there is uh, so to know that, hey, I'm open. Or on the oh, yeah. boom, the boom the, the is rotate. down. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those kind of things. That way, we don't have to hardwire in anything uh, uh, other than just driving motors. Mm -hmm. So let's look at the Saber Two Two by Thirty Two here. This, this thing's cool. This is what a lot of the um, robot wars. Ro robot yep. wars. There you go. Uh, oh, Thirty-two amps, two channel. It will take uh, pulse width modulation. It will do analog, uh, and you can use software to cut it, cut up your signals any way you want. So that okay. depending on where your throttle position is, it doesn't have to be linear. You can and make it where it's some crazy curve, any custom curve you want. For us, we're gonna do that because this thing always has, um, uh, out of the box, it'll have like 0.3 volts on an off pin. For the logic level? Or? Yeah, for the okay. logic level. So we'll be able to use some software to uh, call that zero on the, uh, the motor controller itself. So you see GPIO zero, GPIO one. What we can do is configure all those to, to be inputs. And we're gonna use zero will go as the signal to turn on or off. So that'll go over here. Zero will go to S1. Okay. A1 will be coupled to GPIO one. And what A1 does, if, it, if we uh, put five volts on that or three and a half, 3.3 volts, it'll trigger direction. Okay. Forward or reverse. Do we even need A2? Yes. That would be another motor. So that, that there Oh, yeah, yeah. Be, I forgot. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So then I think we'll go rotation, uh, boom, up, down, uh, okay. boom, rotation. And then you have the winch to lower the hook and raise the hook. So GPIO 0 and 1 will be dedicated to the boom going up and down. That's that, going to be that like motor. S1 or A A1? Correct. Okay. Do you know which one is S1 or A1? Uh, yes. This would be S1, the 0. There we go, and A1, and there we go, and this will be rotation. And then that's S2 and A2. All right. There we go. So that's one card occupied. And then we got another one, another saber tooth, and that will be the winch. O4 is the S1 of for the driving the winch. 
There we go. And then the last motor is the door, S2 and A2. Okay, so we've SSH'd into the Raspberry Pi, and now you want to show me what you've got, uh, what we've done so far with the uh, Alexa software? Yeah, sure. One part about this card is it can serve as an Echo or Alexa Echo. Yeah. You can also modify the code to give the user a unique experience for your application. In this case, it's a clock crane, mm -hmm. so you can you can actually custom tailor things using the features of Alexa to um, give it that unique experience where it's not just an Echo. So I'm going to start the Alexa app Greetings, that's everyone. installed. The Ben Heck Show. Oh, there you go. You heard that. Yeah. Where it said, uh, welcome or greetings to the Ben Heck Show. Mm -hmm. that, that's an example of customization. Alexa, tell us a joke from Raising Awesome. This would be a horrible joke. This was so funny. You might forget to laugh. What is Peanut's favorite game day snack? Microchips. <laughs> so you can tell, you, you can use all the features of Alexa with your hardware appliance and then mm -hmm. customize it uh, to, to anything. But they do have another way of doing voice commands. Now, this being assistive technology, the idea is you don't want someone like elderly or like in our case with MS that has to climb the stairs to turn the clock crane on. The mm -hmm. idea would be you could give it a voice command and then the clock crane would just do its function and there it is ready to take something up. Right, for yeah. you. So um, you can use Alexa as we just saw there, but they also have another feature that you can code where you can create your own weight words. So I got an example here called Wally. We're going to name this clock Wally because okay. yeah. since it's a wall clock. So start Wally and let's make sure everything works there. Okay, so this one's waiting for command. So if I say Wally Blue. Wow. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Wally, boom up. Greetings everyone at the Ben Heck Show. So you, you heard it play a, a sound, but then also it's actually running the software that will drive the motor controllers to, okay. to do things. Like I, by saying Wally boom up, it uh, ran the software we'll take a look at that will control the motors. Okay, let's take a look at the code that's yes. behind here. Yes, edit CC. The uh, matrix, they're developing it for different levels of users. There's, um, there's a hardware abstraction layer that is uh, written in C++. Okay. For me, and I think for the general maker, that is the closest to the Arduino as, as you get. Even though some people might think, oh, C++, that's gonna be crazy. But really, to me, it's, it's an easy leap to go from Arduino writing in C to the C++ oh, yeah, yeah. environment. They do have another level, though, that, that gives them uh, some middleware so you can write in Python. I think they advertise 40 different languages okay. out there. Uh, it does have an FPGA on it, so it gives you direct access to the FPGA. Uh, and so here you look at this code, what we're going to do, we're, uh, again, we're driving four motors in, in both directions right. at the right times. So you see here in the main, you got the various arguments. First thing yep. it's going to do is make sure you gave it an argument. If it didn't, it's going to tell you what they all are. Try again. You see, <laughs> test is it's just going to make the boom go up and down forever. Raise the boom, lower the boom, turn it out, turn it in and all that. Um, it then jumps into setting up threads. I look at threads like involuntary human functions, mm -hmm. like you're, you have your service circulation system, your respiratory system, all that stuff's happening, you're not thinking about it. But all those systems talk to each other. If, if, if uh, you need more oxygen, your heart's gonna pump harder, your lungs are gonna take in more air, you won't even think about it. That's what threads do for you. So in this case, I have these threads. One is it's handling what the lights should be doing. Right. Uh, another one is it's always looking at GPIO. It's, so that's like a sense of touch. Mm -hmm. So it's always looking at, at the GPIO and letting the other threads know what the state is of those. And then uh, there's the sensor thread that is pretty much like the balance of it. It always knows which way it's rolling, pointing, uh, those kind of things. With that then, your other methods can always have updated variables to mm -hmm. know exactly the state of the device. So let, let's make one. I got. I got one more to do on raising the hook. So this would be, the boom has gone out, it's lowered the hook all the way down. Someone has put their two-handed object that they can't get up the stairs into the hook. Now it's ready to go up. So you, you could say, Wally, take the hook up. Well, then the hook starts rising. Well, this is how we're gonna get the rise. The first thing I wanna do is let the, the Everloop thread start lighting. So all I'm gonna do is set a variable I made to uh, lights equal true. Well, that thread's out there waiting for someone to say, hey, I want lights. And okay. now, now this loop here is gonna start uh, brightening up. I'm 
know, I have a timer. Just uh, it's always good to have timers with motors because if if they run for an hour, if for whatever reason they triggered, no one was home because you got a parrot that says, "Hey, Paulie," <laughs> you you eventually yeah, yeah. want the thing to shut off. Mm -hmm. So we got a timer here. Uh, if anything shouldn't ever happen, if anything was already running, we're shutting it off. Okay. And the way that could happen with Linux, you got multiple sessions going. Maybe somebody's running a terminal and another one's running a terminal. And, you know. So first thing I do is just say, "Hey, stop all motors. Make mm -hmm. sure there's no motor." going. This is just for debugging. We're going to say raising the hook. That's so it'll show on the uh, on the screen while it's running. And then if not killed, so killed is a variable that should the, remember our thread on GPIO? If it ever sees GPIO 9 goes to ground, which would be like hitting an emergency stop that we'll design in there. Limit switches? That, yeah. yeah, it's going to turn that word <coughs> kill. Uh, to true, and then every every method I have in here always checks for the if killed is true, mm -hmm. it's not going to turn on a motor. Okay, you know, so yeah, that's good. So we we put that in there just to be safe. So in this case, I've defined all my GPIO with the up in the default section. So this one would be um, we're raising the hook. So I think that is winch um, motor and winch direction. Uh, in this case, we're wanting to go up. And okay. again, I defined the word up to just equal value of one. So that turns on those pins. Mm -hmm. And uh, so then we just want to uh, sit there and loop until either someone hits a killed switch oh. or the timer. And I'm going to say the raise that hook might take um, uh, six seconds. Yeah. Uh, you, you, this is where we'll have to tune it in the house, you know, mm -hmm. uh, there. Now, to get six seconds, though, we're actually talking ticks. So we have to um, look at our sleep command. So it's really a thousand times six thousand, <laughs> which gives you six seconds in real life. Okay. Uh, looping this timer around. So pretty much the sky's the limit because you're you're in C++, hitting FPGA mm -hmm. uh, with a Raspberry Pi that, of course, has Wi-Fi and internet connectivity, but you also can connect to Alexa. And then you have all these various features like talking to uh, uh, Zigbee, you know, just seeing the position of the, the device itself. Mm -hmm. So really, it's hard to outgrow this for me in, in our ex exploring these assistive technology devices, this combo of Pi and the Matrix Creator. But that's pretty much it. So now we can wire it up and, and see yeah. if we can get all this stuff to control. Okay, so essentially these are the components that we're going to have uh, mm -hmm. that are going to be controlling everything. I'm thinking we'll have wires that will connect to our GPL here going to there. And uh, I'm wondering whether we should have wires come and plug into here or wires. Yeah, actually we should, I, you know what, I'll put some headers on here. Okay. And then our control wires will come in here, they'll connect there, so on and so forth. But then our uh, motor wires will go out to the motors. So basically this is all it is that I'm going to do here. Okay, so Sean is freaking out about having a limit switch at the top of the winch. So I better design it before he kicks my butt. All right, so I drew in the end of his uh, steel winch as best I could. So let's just do a few things here. So I'm gonna come out negative uh, 0.166, it's a 3 16th inch steel. Uh, I'm gonna come back here. No, 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 I'm gonna call this, uh, I don't know, boom end, yeah. So this will just represent the boom. I don't really care how, just, yeah. Great, that, that just represents it. And then there's also a piece of steel here as well. So this is the end of it. So my idea is I'm gonna put these switches on either side and I'll put a disc on the rope so the disc will hit these switches and tell them when it's raised all the way up. Yeah, I'm just gonna basically, since I've, I've drawn the steel into the computer, now I'm going to draw a 3D printable interface that will hold these switches and stay out of the way of the pulley.
Okay, now we've done quite a bit of work on this clock crane. Uh, you want to give an overview of what we've done? So Ben helped cut out a lot of wood pieces for the clock, the clock face itself. On the inside, we got all the linear actuators hooked up. The matrix is all ready, coded, and it's ready to go. So we're going to give a demonstration. Cool. Wally, come get the laundry. Okay, that's great. We've got the, the crane down. We've got to put something on here to simulate the load. Yeah. Hold on, Slothy. Wally, take it up. Slothy survived. Guys, this clock crane turned out great. When you first mentioned clock crane, I didn't know what you're talking about, but now I get it. Yeah, we're definitely uh, pleased with it. This is gonna be a great prototype to continue to uh, explore safety features and, and different uh, aspects of this build. Very cool. Yeah, we have a few limit switches on here, but you probably want some more so that when the clock crane turns on, or if the power is lost, it will know what state it's in Correct. and can reset itself appropriately. Yeah, absolutely. Is there anything you're gonna change in, in the future? Uh, pretty much we'll check on load testing on it. So okay. we got some adjustments to make due to, due to the stresses we saw as it was uh, uh, stroking the linear actuators. Right. So pretty much that'll be the only mechanical changes. The rest will all be in software. Cool, cool. So what do you think of this project? Is there anything you would have done differently? Let us know in the Element 14 community at element14.com forward slash TBHS. You can also go there to read about other upcoming episodes, builds, and special events. Stay tuned, we'll see you next week. I am the last of my kind. Due to a genetic anomaly, I was resistant to cat rope disease. I watched as they died one by one, including my beloved wife. <laughs> Of course I was gonna say that. Admiral Kirk never came back. He never told you the tale. When City Alpha 5 exploded. Wait, wait a second, wait a second. What? How did a planet just explode? It, it just did. How? It exploded. You wanna tell us what we've done? Yeah. Tell us what we've done. <laughs> <laughs> you wanna do a overcap of what we've done? Yeah. Overcap? You wanna get, you oh, wanna that's get? That's awesome. <laughs> that was fine. I've always wanted to ask you something, Felix. We'll save it until the 29th, please. Why? Because on June 29th, 9 a.m. Central Standard Time, we are going to have one final live stream where viewers can tune in and ask us questions with the entire Ben Heck crew. Oh, that'll be fun. You know what else would be fun? Giving away one of the builds from the show. Hey, that sounds fantastic. How would someone enter to win the contest? Well, Felix, I'll tell you. All you have to do is post your questions addressed to one of us or all of us by clicking through the link below. The winner will be announced at the end of the live stream. Hey, that sounds easy enough. Please visit the Element 14 community by clicking the link below and posting your questions now.